Hello, this video will help you navigate the new Excel-based EM timesheet. Each employee type has a separate spreadsheet for each person. No matter if you're WB, FWS, or GS, each individual has their type of spreadsheet. For this video, we'll be looking at the GS timesheet. Don't worry, all the timesheets work the same no matter if you're GS, FWS, or WB. We're going to start here on the welcome page where you'll fill out the information in green. Some of it may already be entered, but make sure that it's correct, even if it is. You have your name, your travel day, the event that you're responding to, your home district and your org code, your timekeeper, no matter if it's your disaster timekeeper or your home station timekeeper. If you don't know which one you should be using, just reach out and ask your home station EOC the mission you're responding to, your labor code, and don't worry, you can add this later if you don't have this at the beginning, and your tour duty starting in time. You may not have this if you are given an initial onset tour duty, which in that case, you can actually come down and click that you are using an initial onset tour duty. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But for now, we're gonna go on just a standard tour duty, and we will start by clicking your first pay period. All right, here we are on your first timesheet. The first thing you see is that there are green fields and those are the only ones that you will be able to edit. To start, we'll go to the day that we traveled, which was the 29th, and we will click that we worked that day. And then you will do this for every day after that that you have worked. We're just gonna go to Monday for now just to show you that when we do have a holiday, like here on Labor Day on the 4th of September, it auto moves your regular time to holiday grade. If you worked your 12 hour standard tour duty, there's nothing else you need to do for that day. But if you worked more or less than your tour duty, you do need to fill out those hours manually. So like on Tuesday, we only worked less than 12 hours. So we're gonna type those in including my lunch. And we got off at 1600 that day, 1800 that day. And as you see, that was only 10.5 hours. So the spreadsheet reduced our amount of overtime hours needed. On the next day, it was a busy day and we worked more than the 12 hour tour of duty. So for here, we're going to show that we got off at night at 2100, nine o'clock at night. And as you see, we worked 13 and a half hours and the spreadsheet moves the hours outside of your tour duty and highlights it to let you know that this is overtime and a 6032 will be required. Now, the third instance is if for some reason you didn't make your 12 hours and you didn't even make your eight, maybe you got sick, the spreadsheet will know that you do not have enough hours in there. So maybe you had to take off at noon that day. It tells you that there's something going on and you see the leave type highlight. When that happens, you select what type of leave that is. And then the spreadsheet will populate that where it needs to be. One last thing here on entering your time is a spreadsheet also understands when you come in early. So if you come in before your tour duty, you can type that in as well. You still have to type in your lunch. Oh. I forgot to use the colon here in my time and the spreadsheet will not allow you to do that without it. So we'll just have to cleanse that real quick, get our lunch in, and then we left at our normal time. And there it shows again that you have one hour of unscheduled overtime in a 6032 is required. Now that we've entered all our time in for that week, we can go and verify our hours. If you are the employee, all you have to do is click that your hours have been entered for that week. And then it's up to your own site emergency supervisor to fill in that they have verified your hours. So they will type in their name. And then they can also click that their hours have been verified. And then the next week, in case you've had a change in supervisor, you can type in a new supervisor or the same one. We'll say we got a new one. And then once your hours have been entered for that week, you would click that as well. 
and then they would verify those hours as well. Once these hours have been verified, it can be sent to your timekeeper, home station EOC, or anywhere else that may need them. Each district is different, so to make sure to understand the process that needs to be followed, please ask your home station EOC and the supported EOC that you are helping. All right, we're back here talking about your initial tour of duty. If you have one of these, it means you do not have an official start and end time. In that case, you will just click yes, and then we'll go click our yellow square instead of the blue. But remember, once you do get your standard tour of duty later, come back in, in here and add it. For now, we're gonna click our yellow button, and it works pretty much the same way as the other ones, except for the GS, it does not pre-populate any hours. So for each day that you worked, you still have to click yes or no, and then you have to actually type those hours in for that day. And then the spreadsheet will populate as needed. The only difference here is for the WB and the FWS, they actually do have some hours that you can. So if you do work a standard set of hours during your initial tour of duty and your WB or FWS, you can type in those standard set of hours. And then it works just like your normal sheet where you just type in if you worked outside of those hours. If you have any questions, especially about the initial, please reach out to your home station EOC and we will help you out as much as we can. Thank you. Enjoy your deployment.